Everyone always asks me, what, why now? What changed? How come you can say all these things today? And the answer is because the science is now here. The one thing that we know categorically that can mitigate chronic metabolic diseases is reduction in calories. And of course, that's why your doctor says, eat less, exercise more. Even I would like to be able to say, eat less, exercise more. The problem is, it can't be done. It's not doable. And there are reasons, there are biochemical reasons why it's not doable that have to do with new hormones that have just been discovered. For instance, one called leptin. Leptin is a hormone that goes from your fat cell to your brain and tells your brain you've had enough and that you can burn energy at a normal rate and feel good about it. It limits what you eat and it lets you exercise spontaneously because you want to. Obesity you have high levels of leptin because you have lots of fat because it comes from the fat cell. But if leptin were doing its job, then you wouldn't be obese. So how do you explain high levels of leptin and still eating too much? Clearly, the leptin is not doing its job. And we call that leptin resistance. And discovering the cause of leptin resistance is the holy grail of obesity research. It is the nugget of truth that we all seek. How come leptin used to work 30 years ago and doesn't work today? That's what it's all about, in a nutshell. And our research has demonstrated some very specific, significant findings. And I can sum it up in one word, insulin. Now, everyone knows insulin. Everyone knows it's the diabetes hormone. Diabetics take shots of insulin to lower their blood sugar. Indeed. So let's take a diabetic off the street, any diabetic. Blood sugar is 300, that's high. We give that diabetic a shot of insulin. Blood sugar goes from 300 down to 100. That's good, right? Blood sugar went down by 200 points. Where'd the 200 points of blood sugar go? They were in the blood, now they're not. They went somewhere. They went to the fat for storage. That's insulin's job. That's not a mistake. That's what it's supposed to do. Insulin shunts sugar to fat, period. Insulin makes fat, period. More insulin, more fat, period. Insulin drives weight gain. And I can explain how this works. Let's take you, nice and thin. You eat 2,000 calories a day, you burn 2,000 calories a day, you feel good, normal day. Are you gonna gain weight, lose weight, or stay the same? You stay the same, because you burn what you eat, nothing to store, fine. Now let's do a little experiment. I'm gonna put an IV in your arm and tape it down. I'm gonna follow behind you, and every time you reach for food, I'm gonna pump you full of extra insulin in that IV insulin you didn't want or need. I'm going to over-insulinize you just like we do our diabetic patients. So, you wake up in the morning, you start eating 2,000 calories just like before, but now, because of the excess insulin I'm pumping you full of, 500 of those 2,000 calories straight to fat. Like what the IRS does to your paycheck. Right off the top, gone before you had a chance to spend it, in this case, gone before you had a chance to burn it. You are now 500 calories heavier. If you stood on a scale, you would weigh a seventh of a pound more, whether you liked it or not, because of what I did to you. Now, you ate 2,000, but you lost 500 to your fat. How many are left to burn? 1,500. Except for one thing, your body wants to burn 2,000 because that's where it feels good. And how many calories you burn and how good you feel are synonymous. Things that make you want to burn energy, things that increase your energy expenditure make you feel good, like exercise, caffeine. Things that reduce your energy expenditure make you feel lousy, hypothyroidism, starvation.
So how many calories you burn and how good you feel are the same. You only have 1,500 to burn, but your body wants to burn 2,000. So what do we call that? That's called starvation. So how do you feel when you're starved? Crappy, tired, slothy, sit on the couch, don't want to do anything, don't want to exercise, maybe watch TV or play video games. Sound familiar? And of course, hungry. And in a world of free access to food, which we all live in, what are you going to do? Eat back the 500. So now, instead of eating 2,000 calories, now you're eating 2,500. You've increased your food intake to compensate for the effects of the excess insulin. Except, haha, I'm still pumping you full of insulin. 100 of those 500, right off the top, straight to fat. Now you're 600 calories heavier. You're only up to 1,900 to burn. You still don't feel perfect. So you go to a doctor, you go to a nutritionist, you say, Doc, every time I stand on the scale, I weigh more and I don't feel so good. What's going on? Why am I fat? And the doctor looks at you and says, I know why you're fat. You're a glutton and a sloth. You eat too much, you exercise too little, and guess what? He's right, it's true. You are. But it's not because you chose to, it's not because you want to, it's because you have to. It's a biochemical drive set up by the insulin I pumped you full of. So you say, okay, well, that's all well and good. But how does that explain what happened in these 30 years? No one's pumping me full of insulin. Ah, yes, they are. You're not being pumped full of it. You're making it yourself. But you're making it because of the change of the industrial global diet. It comes as part and parcel of that dietary composition. And that's what's driving obesity. So then you say to me, okay, well, if that's what's going on, why isn't my leptin working? Because the work we've done shows that insulin blocks leptin at the brain and makes you hungry. So the higher your insulin goes, the more energy you store and the hungrier you get. And there's your vicious cycle of consumption, weight gain, and disease, all being promoted by excess insulin, which comes from the industrial global diet.